Hey guys, how's it going? Um, today I'm going to delid a, an i3 7350K. Uh, this processor was previously delidded on a live um, Twitch stream I did not too long ago. So I'm going to redo it just so I can kind of see how the thermal paste and uh, the silicone that I used is holding up. Uh, now that it's been run in the system uh, about two days now. Um, a, few, a bit of stress testing, of course overclocking. Um, so this is a process that I do offer on, on client builds. I uh, just started to offer it not too long ago. Uh, and I even have uh, a service where I'll do it for just random, you know, clients that maybe I didn't build their computer or maybe I did and, and now they just want this done. Uh, because it could really actually save, you know, you a lot of, um, you know, could shave off up to 20 degrees Celsius, honestly. Uh, my 7700K saw a 12 degrees drop in temperature. This i3 only saw a 5 degree drop, but I'm thinking it's mostly because it's used with a 212 Evo CPU cooler. And it's probably a mixture of the CPU coolers already kind of at its limit. But, um, you know, it, it's one of those things. Uh, when you're trying to overclock and squeeze every little bit out of a CPU, uh, everything helps. So I'm using the Rocket Cool D-Lid tool. I believe they call it the Rocket 88. Um, can't remember off the top of my head. It's real simple. You just um, put the CPU in. It's, it's notched. So we'll have the the two triangles line up like you would when you put it in your motherboard. And uh, this is the part that actually knocks the uh, metal part, which is the IHS off. Um, you want to make sure this is all the way back. So you know, make sure your screws all the way out. And just uh, the way I kind of do it, I, I just approach it in this manner, so I know it's recessed. Of course you have the screw up top. Um, just throw the three bolts in. Finger tight. You don't need to crank down on this with like pliers or anything. This is going to be the most stressful part for people is when you actually go to pop it off. Um, some CPUs make a really loud pop. Others, uh, this i3 didn't even make a sound at all, but um, you know, some of them will sound like a really nice pop. If you work on cars, it's kind of like when you pop a ball joint off, it's what I would kind of describe it as similar experience. So now we're just going to tighten this in, um, and you'll be able to see how this, this um, bolt is now closer to the CPU. It is now touching the IHS. We'll crank down on it. Yeah, so this came off super easy because um, when I assembled this, I intentionally used a tiny amount of silicone. And I think I could get away with using less. So that's what today's all about. When I did it on stream, I didn't have uh, time to let it dry on, on live camera. So I just popped it in while the silicone was wet. Obviously it dried while it was in the system and when it came out that thing was on. Um, but it still allowed me to remove it a lot easier than um, you know the OEM application. So let's check this out. Um, th this is It's good to use a little bit because uh, the less you use you know the, t the closer the IHS is to the CPU die but, um, you know, it's just uh, easier to remove again if you need to. A lot of people use the Cool Labs Liquid Ultra, um, which probably doesn't need to be reapplied as frequently, but let's say you use, like, like I'm using the Noctua uh, NTH1, you may want to reapply it once a year, once every two years. So, if it comes off nice and easy, that's a, a bonus in my book. Ooh. Yeah, let's be careful there. That was a little bit of the silicone that um, that came, uh, kind of pulled it off of the bench here. So 
we can see the small amount that I used actually um, didn't really create any distance from the die. You can see that um, you know the the silicone was nicely pushed out, so it seems like what was holding it in was probably the little excess that was in there. Um, totally used a little more knock to a thermal paste than I should have, but it's okay. Interesting. It looks like um, looks like we had a nice even pressure, maybe a little bit more in the center which is cool so now we're gonna go clean this off just gonna use a rag to get the thermal paste off this is actually my personal CPU as well uh, I picked it up for the test bench because um, I love to overclock. The i3 7350K isn't much of a value CPU one bit, but you know it's it's a it's a good little processor. There's not much value, but you know what? It it's a pleasure to use. I'm super picky about performance. I hate waiting and. Um, you know, in web browsing and everything, this doesn't feel much different than than my actual 7700K. Um, I haven't loaded up any of my spreadsheets, but I anticipate this thing doing pretty well in office tasks. Okay, so I'll go back and clean that off with alcohol. Let's see how easy this uh, silicone is to remove. I don't know how dry it may or may not be. But it's coming off way easier than the original black stuff that Intel uses. I don't know if it's an industry standard, but I know the black silicones were always like the better, stronger ones to use. For like, you know, if you're like a mechanic or something you're trying to resell a differential or something so use the black silicone not the blue stuff so my plan is trying to get this to be easy to service in the future going with the blue seems to have been a, a decent choice now when I do this the first time it, the silicone doesn't come off this easy um, I use a more abrasive shop towel to work off the uh, the black silicone that Intel uses without damaging the CPU. Uh, you don't want to cut into anything because there's all these traces that are under this green layer. So I use the rag just to gently kind of remove it. It's a pain. It takes a lot of time. I may find something that's a little more efficient at it but I love how clean it it comes off it just you see I mean you know there's a few little specks here that I'll remove but I mean this is like a really nice application or I mean a um, cleanup job just uh, get the rest of this nice and clean Now I'm just going to go back and uh, clean off the heat spreader here. I will want to clean both surfaces with alcohol just to remove any um, anything that may be left behind. I wish uh, the original I wish the original uh, removal of the silicone was this easy. It requires some elbow grease, that's for sure.
So I'll do a quick wipe down of everything. Actually, I'm gonna cut this paper towel in half. Wipe down my hands. I'm using latex gloves to keep the oils off of the parts, but uh, I want to make sure these gloves are clean too. clean surface so this is where the rocket 88 tool comes in handy for resealing things uh, this will go over it just like this and then um, I'll put silicone on, on this and then it'll just drop right in and then um, this tool right here will actually keep it clamped down so now the next step is going to be to apply the silicone and uh, using the Loctite Superflex Blue RTV, I'm just going to put a small amount on this little plastic lid I have here. Stuff will dry up quick so I'm going to have to just pull back a little bit on it. So I'm going to see um, if I could use a little less than the last time and still get a uh, good amount of retention of abilities. TH1 to the CPU die. So um, some people will spread it on, but currently I've found, um, at least with Skylake and Cavi Lake, because the die is square, I think it's doing a good job of keeping the thermal paste where it should be. Um, right now, we're you know I'm in discussions with someone. Uh, with the older Haswell that um, we're wondering if it if we don't spread it on that it might actually degrade performance over time but um, so far with Sky Lake and which is basically the same as Cavi Lake um, I haven't noticed that
Okay, so I'm going to pay attention for that triangle because that will tell me where's the top and bottom of the CPU. This is what's actually going to hold down the IHS, you know, the heat spreader, to the CPU itself, the, you know, the PCB and everything. This is what's going to keep everything in place while the silicone cures. Uh, some people use uh, crazy glue, but um, that actually, the thought of that kind of scares me because if you ever need to remove the IHS again, I'd be worried about that green top layer ripping off. So I'm just going to make sure everything's still nice and square. And then now we're just going to clamp down. What you saw me do there is I loosened and tightened again just to kind of make sure everything was nicely seated. And uh, from here on now, you know, you should probably at least wait two hours, but for this one in particular, I'm probably going to uh, just let it go overnight. And with client ones, that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm preparing my, my ads and everything to say that um, overnight is what I require. And that is it guys, um, when this silicone is cured, it'll be essentially like an OEM installation, but the advantage is we're going to have a better thermal paste, and this thinner layer of silicone is going to help um, the, the IHS to sit a little closer to the die, so really there's less um, thermal paste that's in between the die and the heat spreader. So thanks for watching guys. If you uh, decide to have this done on a client build that I do for you or you want to bring me a CPU to do, this is, this is what you're going to get with my, you know, quote unquote deluxe service. And, uh, you know, the, the base service would be just popping off the heat spreader and, uh, you know, the client could clean and use their own thermal paste application. Um, my deluxe service is going to be exactly this, plus I do a baseline and an after test uh, with temperatures. So, thanks for watching and until next time.